I'm John B. Cannon, and in this video, we're going to learn how to manage time signature changes in the pieces of music that you make. Now, it could be that you're wedded to the idea of just working in 3-4 or 4-4 all the way through your track. The different time signatures, the way that we break up the bars of our tracks, it could be that we just need to keep those consistent all the way through, in which case the global time signature up here is all we need. Now, what I've done in order to be able to see this window is that I've come to the transport bar and I've selected the custom option. From a nice long drop down menu of uh, options, the custom option gives me the longest transport bar and it shows me a whole bunch of data relating to my track. And amongst those things is the time signature. Now, if you're making EDM, it's entirely likely that you're going to be working in 4-4 and you're going to want to stay in 4-4 all the way through. What exactly does 4-4 mean? Well, it means four crotchet beats per bar or four quarter notes. So effectively what we've got is four beats per bar. But in this little piece of music, what I've done is to write a phrase which is just a little bit not quite right for a 4-4 structure all the way through the piece. I'm going to show you what I mean. We'll just have a listen through to the track that I've written and then we'll see how we need to manage time signature. Okay, now what I really want to do with this piece is to sort of loop it. I want that phrase to happen a second time. But if I look at exactly what I've written, I've got a sort of structure which is working in 4-4 up to this point, but then I've got this extra beat right at the end. In other words, if I wanted to loop this, the loop would be to this point here at the end of um, this sort of second beat of bar six. If I put a loop around this whole section, we'll see that this is the natural loop for this particular phrase. So that's working well, except that if I was to chop these regions at this point and loop at this point, effectively my new downbeat, which is currently happening at bar two, would be happening in bar six at beat two. And that's not really ideal. What I want to do is to insert a time signature change to add in this extra beat as a five four bar. In other words, rather than having four four all the way through, bar five needs to be a five four bar and then it needs to switch back to 4-4 so that my loop can happen. In other words, I've got five crotchet or quarter note beats in bar five, rather than the four that are happening in the other um, bars within the track. So how do I change time signature? Well, it's really straightforward. What I need to do is to just simply bring the playback um, head to bar five, where I want to insert my time signature change. And what I then want to do is to select the time signature that I want to add. So to do that, I'm going to click on the time signatures right here. And what I'm going to do is select five, four. Now I've got a list of options, or if the time signature that I need is a custom one, not one that's in this list, I can add it. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. But 5-4 is here and it's the one that I want, so I'm going to select it. Now, at this point, Logic is going to say to me, OK, hang on, what exactly do you want to do? Do you want to change the entire project time signature, which means that every bar will become 5-4? Or do I want to insert a new one at this point? Well, that is what I want to do. This second option is the one that I want. So I'm going to select Insert New Signature. And what I'll see straight away is that Logic has now added a 5-4 bar here. So I've got four four bars up to this point, and now I've got a five four bar. And what that means is that I can then come back here to bar six. I can return to four four, and this time Logic knows that I want to just add one at this point. So effectively what I've got now is a phrase that's in four four all the way through to bar five. Then I get a five four bar, and then it's going to come back to four four. And if we run that with the metronome, we'll hear that the very end sort of downbeat is now happening on the first beat of the bar as opposed to on beat two where it was before. So there's the downbeat and what I'm now in a position to do is to select that and sort of loop it. Now, a moment ago, I was uh, talking about the sort of custom options. What if what I wanted to do here at bar seven was to create a new time signature that didn't exist within the list of options that are available to me? Well, if I come back up to here to the time signature, drop down, and I come to custom, 
What I can then do is to say, okay, well, firstly, how many beats do I want and what do I want the note value to be? So moments ago, I was talking about the idea of 4-4 four, four being four crotchet or quarter note beats per bar. So four of these, and then these are my quarter note beats per bar. The note value is a quarter note. So if I wanted suddenly to switch into 12-8 time, for instance, what I can do is to select 12 here, and then what I can do is to select my note value as being 12.8. And I can see straight away that a 12.8 bar has been created here. So this is effectively 12 quavers, if you like, um, or 12 eighth notes in a bar instead. And again, I can simply just come anywhere I like and simply select the value that I want, either from this drop down list um, or um, from the custom menu. And you can see that the moment that you've created a time signature that didn't already exist within the list, it will be added to this list. So it's easier to return to that point. Now then, the other thing to know about time signatures is that there is a list of them within the list editors as well. So if I come over here to the list editors area, which I can click on here or simply press the key command D, I can see that there is a time signature tab here. So if what I wanted to do was to say, okay, this bar, this one that I've just created at bar seven, this new 12-8 um, time signature, actually I don't need it. I can simply click on it here and I can delete it. Or if I want to, I can edit it. So bringing it back, just using command and Z to undo that step, I'd be in a position to change the values of these. So if I wanted a 10-8 bar instead, I, or an 11-8 bar, I could make that change if I wanted to. So effectively the list editor allows me to manage the changes that I've made. But remember, the easiest way to do it is simply just move the playhead to the point at which you want to insert a new time signature and simply just add the values you want. And that means we can get away from this kind of rigid four-four structure to all of the pieces that we write.